على الآيات والذكر وفي فيض من العتر هنا رمضان مدرسة تنير مآثر الفكر على الآيات السلام عليكم Welcome to Ramadan Eats with Shaz Eats Yesterday, I made a delicious dal soup with prawns. Um, today, I'm making a pita bread, which would go extremely well with that soup and alternatively will go very well with tomorrow's dish. Um, pita bread also delicious with a variety of dates and some dukkha powder, a little bit of olive oil and yogurt, quite traditional in the Middle East, especially in Makkah and Medina Munawara. So, um, you know, making your own pita bread at home is, is a nice way of actually keeping that homeliness and that feeling and the festive flair in your cooking in Ramadan. Um, and there's so many ways in which you can enjoy it. On top of the pita bread, when once it's made, I've got some melted butter. You can either have it with some coriander, some chilies, um, and you can have vari various variations or with some garlic to give it that differenceness with the different pita breads in the home. So um, according to what your family would like. So very basic recipe and it's broken up into a few parts because you've got to let this pita bread dough rest because it's got yeast in it. Um, and then you again roll it out and then you let it rest again and then it's just pan fried um, on, a, uh, on a skillet pan. So I've got some whole wheat flour here, some warm water, some yeast, some sugar and some salt, which makes the dough. It goes into my kitchen aid. I've got the kneading hook um, for, to mix this blend together. Very, very simple. I'm gonna put in my flour. I've got one cup to three quarter cup of water. I'm gonna put my packet of yeast, some sugar and some salt. Now, normally whenever you add something in with yeast, it does need a, a, a sugar added into it to get the yeast dough pruing. Um, you could use maple syrup or you could use honey. I've actually gone with a traditional recipe with a teaspoon of sugar. And all you do is get that dough mixed together. So the dough has been kneading for a few minutes and there's no flour left on the edges of the bowl. So it's practically done. Very, very easy recipe, really comes together quite well. I'm just going to knead it a little bit on the table. Now it's quite important, there's two things that are quite essential when you're making a pita bread or a, a bread that rises. You need to have like a lukewarm water and you need a sugar with the yeast uh, so that it can rise. Okay, now this goes back into the bowl where I had the where I started off with the flour and it gets covered with cling film and you kind of forget about it for the next half an hour that so that it doubles in size. If you can let it um, rise for a little longer, that's even better, but I'm gonna give it around half an hour. I'm gonna roll it out and then it let, I let it rise for another 15 minutes before I pan fry it on either side. And it's topped up with some butter, some coriander or garlic or chilies. So the dough has been resting for the last half an hour and there is a rise. I'm gonna take it out from the bowl. We're gonna give it a second rise before we actually pan fry it on a skillet. And I should have enough for eight naan or eight pita bread. I've got nine balls over here. Now it's entirely up to you how you want to roll them. Either you can roll them round or you could have them in an oblong shape, like a naan or a pita bread. So I think um, I'm gonna have a little bit of a variation. And my mom 
I think at this stage will be very proud in me showing that I can roll around roti. You don't want them too big. So my pan is, has heated up. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil and I'm going to take the first one I rolled and I'm only gonna like pan fry it on one side and it, then it goes onto my oven tray and it goes underneath the grill. Um, I'm gonna brush it with some butter um, and a rice will occur. So just a few minutes on just on one side. And always like a pancake or the first roti or the first night is always a little bit harder than the rest because it takes a little bit of time to cook. Okay, so it's got a little bit of color and I'm gonna put it over here. I'm going to put a little bit more olive oil and while I'm doing, while that is happening, I'm going to brush some melted butter on top of my pita bread over here. Now, either you can put some chili, you can put some garlic or some coriander on the top and it goes in. So in this one, I'm just gonna have a little bit of coriander or you could have them plain. My girls actually like them quite plain. My husband likes chili. Okay, so I'm gonna do the last one with just some butter. So I've got some coriander, chili, garlic. I've done a chili and coriander and a plain one. And again, this goes under the grill for a few minutes for it to rise. Personally, my perfect iftar is homemade naan or pita bread, a good Greek style yogurt, some olive oil, a little bit of honey, some dukkha powder and a selection of dates. And in Ramadan, I like having a selection of dates just as this because there are different preferences for the family. Now, Ajwa has the most benefits and um, favorite um, of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, and has lots of healing properties. Sukari is my favorite. It's very, very sweet and goes very well with the pita bread. Um, and then there's the burni, which is quite, um, also has lots of healing properties. And this one is the saf safira, I, I, I think, and it's great for baking as well. But a whole variety of dates, a selection of naan, a bit of yogurt, a little bit of olive oil, a bit of honey. It can't get better than that. That's my perfect iftar. Make it yours. Ramadan Eats with Shaz Eats. Enjoy. Ala al-ayati wa al-dhikri wa fi faydin min al-atari هنا رمضان مدرسة تنير مآثر الفكر على الآيات والذكر وفي فيض من العطر هنا رمضان مدرسة تنير مآثر الفكر